Okay, moving on. Uh, Rick Bolin. Um, what about the claim that 8 over 8 really means H over H, which in turn stands for Heil Hitler? <laughs> uh, I haven't heard that yet. Is that today? Yeah, sure. Today's 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, uh, that's why we're doing our white supremacy episode tonight, uh, Rick, because any idiot can see that H over H, 8 slash 8, in other words, August 8th, really does mean HH, which means Heil Hitler, obviously, uh, or when it doesn't mean Hubert Humphrey or, um, you know, help the homeless or uh, uh, any number of other things that H and H could, could come together as. It'd be fun. In fact, I think I've already started it without even asking. Uh, it'd be fun to see how many um, like progressive things you could get together out of, uh, out of HH, you know? Um, in any event, uh, you got a really good point then. Is it the most ridiculous assertion ever? Well, Rick, all I can tell you right now is it's the most ridiculous assertion I've heard so far. But tomorrow is another day. And the one thing, um, one thing that we can uh, all agree on is that this train that the progressives is that the progressives are on is is accelerating downhill very 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 rapidly uh the brakes have failed and it's just it's just going faster and faster and it's just barely hanging on to the rails and and sooner or later it's going to get to a speed when it won't be able to take the turn and it's just going to go straight off and flying into the sky and and all the rest of it the, we saw this at the Democratic debate, and 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 if we thought that, see, and it's also just it's also accelerating very very quickly. In other words, the whole idea is silly, and then it got sillier and sillier and sillier, and now it's like an exponential thing where, where it's getting so much stupider, so much faster that it really does look like it's about to just basically come down. Um, so if you thought that the Democratic um, National Convention was a goat rodeo. Of, of losers and um, and lame ideas. How long did we have to wait for that to be topped? Was it four days, five days, six, seven, something like that? Before we see the footage from the American uh, Democratic Socialists of America Committee and, and, and these people who are presumably going to launch this worldwide revolution, you know, standing up and saying, look, I'm easily distracted and easily overloaded by, uh, by stimuli, and, and there's just too much chatter in here, so could, could the rest of the comrades act in a more comradely fashion, please, and just, and just try to be more considerate of people like me, because it triggers my anxiety. And uh, I'm thinking, we got nothing to worry about from these people, seriously. Uh, point of personal privilege, uh, yes, Dark Waters, uh, go ahead, comrade. Um, it's just it's just joke. They, they, yeah, and 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 Lisa's pointing out um, as as others have, you know, they they they're doing this because they've decided that clapping, applauding is either triggering to people because it's a loud noise, or 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 deaf people are not allowed to experience it. So so rather than you know applauding, we just this is applause. And they're so proud of themselves for this, you know. They're so, they're so forward on it. And then you watch these idiots trying to get anything in order, and and they can't get out of the introduction because all of these people are trying to uh, out virtue each other. They're they're not, you know. Let me tell you, let me just tell you a quick little story about the patriarchy. Uh, it's a telling story. Everybody talks about the patriarchy and how evil the patriarchy is and so on, which is essentially saying when men do things. Um, and a good example of the patriarchy at work is we have a spacecraft with three people on board it's, it's leaving at 24,000 miles an hour, heading to the moon. Uh, and it's, it's tens of thousands, if not 100,000 miles away, and it explodes. And the patriarchy works by having one guy in charge telling the other people who are in charge of their guys that you guys are responsible for this, you guys are responsible for that, you guys are responsible for this. And all of those guys have the confidence to talk about and, and speak back and forth just the way we were talking about just a few moments ago. 
So the patriarchy is able to is able to create a new spacecraft out of ideas, bring these guys back from the moon, and return them safely to the Earth. That's what patriarchal st structure is. And military structure uh, is, uh, is even more regimented, but basically in the military you will follow the orders of the person who is your superior officer. Now sometimes that leads to some very bad decisions, but you know what it does? actually do? This is a really important point. Sometimes obeying orders in a straight down uh, authoritarian thing like a military command uh, can lead to bad decisions and bad outcomes. But the modern military is far more flexible than it used to be in the idea that a, a private can't tell a general what to do. I don't think that's true anymore. I have to be careful about it, but you know, the, the military is making astonishing mental efforts to, to not cut themselves off from good ideas. So this is the patriarchy. And, and the patriarchy means that we can put 11 nuclear-powered floating oceans of steel out there and launch jets that weigh thousands and thousands of pounds and fly at 1,000 miles an hour and launch them and recover them and do all of this simultaneously, plus all of the supporting ships and the submarines, all of it. That's the patriarchy. I had a little experience with the matriarchy um, when I was working in Gainesville, Florida, I was doing, I had a, a little uh, uh, 3D production company. And um, I had been a theater major there many years before, and I got to know many people at a very, very excellent theater called the Hippodrome Theater in, in Gainesville, Florida. Um, and uh, in the Hippodrome, and this would be a while ago now, be 93 maybe, something like that. The Hippodrome was not a patriarchy. The Hippodrome was a matriarchy. And when I went in, I, I would do the commercials for them for like $300, I'd do this animation. Um, but basically, when I would go in to, to, to hear about the show so that I could come up with a commercial for it, I went into these meetings, and these meetings that were run by the actors who ran the theater ran it in the, uh, in the very loving, very sensitive, extremely caring... Uh, and um, a fully equal environment of a matriarchy, where they where they said during the meeting, "Look, I'm no, I'm I'm not, I, I can't tell you what to do. I'm just you know I, my position is this." And do you know what happened during that 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 two and a half hour meeting? You're gonna think I'm making this up. I swear to God, I I'm I I, I just I'm not that bright. I'm not that imaginative. I sat at that meeting while these women took two and a half hours. I'm not joking. Two and a half hours to determine whether or not their flyer would go out on goldenrod or canary yellow. Two and a half hours. And it ended with one of them leaving the room in tears. And, and, it, and the reason that happened was because if you are going to put every single thing up to a vote and every single thing has to be approved by everybody and and then and then you find out that that they're going they're going to go with the goldenrod after everything I said and all the points I made about canary <laughs> and it's like well what else do you expect if you if you're telling people that your input on whether we use canary or goldenrod uh, colored paper for for our flyers and and you just spent the last hour defending canary and 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 and, and trying to defeat the, the that that bitch who's uh, who's uh, who's who's you know in the goldenrod pocket if, if you spend that much time and effort on such trivial things, you get absolutely nothing done. It just nothing. And not only do you not get anything done, you don't get anything done and you make lifelong enemies in, in, in addition. So, um, and uh, Puma Savage says, I'm a female and I've never led like that. LOL, that would make, that would drive me nuts. I'm very glad you said that. I don't mean to imply for a second that this is all... Uh, women like this. In fact, I've worked mostly for women producers most of my life, and some of them have been great, and some of them have been terrible, but I didn't notice them to be any better or worse than the men. But but they were using... It was a, it was a patriarchal system. She was the producer. I was the editor. She's my boss. I want to do something one way. She wants to do something else. Guess who wins? Okay? And and so so things get done. And and when you realize that uh, perfect is the enemy of the good, 
when you realize that if you're going to spend all of your time arguing about trying to make something so trivial be equal and fair, when in a patriarchal system, including women in a patriarchal system, what would have happened was, okay, and we're going to put these things out on goldenrod. Um, uh, Bill? Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you think about canary? Uh, canary's nice, but we're going to go with goldenrod. Anyway, moving on. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just insane. It's insane. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, how I got there from H over H, 8 over 8, I am uh, unaware, but that's not surprising that I'm unaware. What happened to my screen there? 